Hi. So in the last video, I was talking more about love consciousness and the inner child. That's something I talk about a lot on this channel. And for all the new subscribers, I really, really appreciate you. For everybody who leaves me a comment, I really appreciate what you say to me. It's really nice. Thank you. And again, if you have any questions pertaining to anything that I'm talking about or you want me to make a video about certain things that I talk about, please let me know and I will. But again, I'm very grateful for all of you and for those of you that actually watch all of my videos and that actually watch them all the way through. <laughs> I'm very grateful for all of you. It means a lot. So on this channel, again, it's just my perspective on different things. You don't have to agree with it. It's just my viewpoint. It's how I've always experienced certain things. It's how I connect to different things. And it's that I'm trying different things to make my life better or just different ways in which I do certain things that have helped me. And you don't have to agree with it. You don't even have to try it. But for me personally, a lot of what I talk about is through my experiences and just, again, different things that that I've been able to connect with in my life and how it keeps unfolding. And it's just it's been really beautiful. It's been really hard. It's been painful. It's been intense. But, you know, I've always connected to life in a very what I would consider spiritual way. Because I've always believed that I have a depth. And I didn't really fully understand what that meant. And I still don't fully understand what that means. I can only keep explaining it in different ways to where you understand it. And then I continue to get a basic understanding of it. Which means what? That I continue to just connect with it. It's a process. It's not something that I just say, ta-da, and then it's over. No, it's something I continue to talk about. I encourage you to watch, you know, my different videos because I can't just explain something in one video and that's it. It's it's more that I keep explaining things and even as I'm explaining it, it continues to make more and more sense for me. But again, I just share with you guys, again, just how I look at things and things that I try that just really continue to help me progress in life. Because to me, that's what we're here for, because that is the one thing that we continue to be capable of. So whatever you believe, and, you know, I always use the term universe, source, creator, creation, existence, whatever term you want to use for it, what we know is that we exist. But what we also know is that we evolve, we change, we adapt, we transform by nature. It's in our nature to continue to process and that is what we are capable of no matter how fast or slow it goes it doesn't matter there it's not a race there's no end point and you don't get brownie points because you're more profound it's just that we it's a constant movement and I say it's a forward movement because it just means that we continue to be capable of <clears throat> understanding more and more but that could also mean that we're capable of connecting deeper and deeper and so I'm just going to talk about a few things today and let me tell you this morning I woke up and I was thinking about the evolution of emotions so I I'm going to try to talk about unconditional love a little bit but I'm also going to talk about how we've evolved as people and i'm not gonna get super specific or scientific -y. that's not what i'm trying to do right now although i would i think i might like to make a video about that i don't know i reserve the right to do it or not do it depending on how i feel <laughs> but it's all all of these things are fascinating to me how we got here what's the point but it's not so much what's the point it's what do we what not feels good but what the reason why i always say what are we capable of is because that becomes our process and when i say process that becomes a fulfillment for us and that again becomes a connection 
And I think connection is super important within ourselves, within other people, within nature. We Everything's connected. But if we're not in tune to it, we're not experiencing it at its fullest. It meaning life or existence, whatever you want to call it. And that doesn't mean that you have to do something super extreme all the time to be happy or to be connected. You could be sitting on a park bench staring at a butterfly and be completely connected in that moment. Why? Because you're being in your present self, your present state of being really not only connected to the butterfly or the beauty of it, but it's that you exist and you're appreciating that existence in that moment. And even being in the present moment to me is something that's extremely difficult to learn how to do. So when I see two, three minute videos be in your present moment, ta-da, I'm like, okay, what does that mean? Again, for me, it's a process. Even again on this channel, I've seen the way that just me personally that I've evolved and that's just another word for transformed and that's just another word for changed. Why? Because we continue to learn. We continue to adapt to new ways of being. We continue to adapt to our environment, to our circumstances. Even COVID, for example, what's happening, we've all had to now adapt to this new way of life that's happening for us right now. So we are adaptive by nature. And the reason why I'm bringing that up and why that's important for our emotional state of being is because emotions are also very adaptive. But what's always true is the more conscious we become of the fact that we're lovable, the fact that we are meaningful, I believe that does help us connect to our present self and that does help us appreciate the moment more. And so we're really able to live a more fulfilling, satisfying life. I personally don't think that a satisfying life is once again going out and doing something super extreme all the time. It's, it's not even having a lot of money or being super successful in a job. I don't, I don't think any of that is really what it what it can mean. I mean, that can be fun and I'm not saying it's not. Go out and have a good time, of course. But what's meaningful? Us, what's always meaningful? Existence, how that even is. And the reason why I also say that is because when we start connecting to things that aren't necessarily meaningful, all of those things can be taken away. So something I always ask you guys is if everything was taken away from you right now, if you're rich and all your money was taken away, how would you still believe that you're meaningful or lovable? What do you think your purpose is? If your car was taken away from you, how do you still feel good about yourself and who you are? How do you still connect? If your job was taken away, how do you still feel lovable? Who are you? What's your sense of self? How do you feel purposeful? And the re again, the reason why I, I ask you guys that, and that's for you to think about, because a lot of times we tend to develop a sense of self based on what we, <clears throat> sorry, on what we have, possessions, material items. And so we're con very connected to things outside of ourselves on a very materialistic level sometimes. And if all of that's taken away, what do you mean? What's fulfilling now? So being in our present moment, being in our present self and really feeling a deep sense of connection or love expansion even, it's about us. It really is. And it's not to say that we can't love other people or that we can't connect to other people. I think we do. Of course, we need community. We're Again, we're social beings by nature. But it really does start with us. And I know we hear that. If I don't love myself, I can't love you. And But again, what does that even mean? Because love now to me is existence. And again, I was saying that in the last video. It's that we exist and that's what we know. That's what we understand. And we progress by nature. Progression can also be a form of consciousness. And I think just in different times through different experiences, 
what we're constantly doing is expanding that meaningfulness, that love consciousness, that space of love. No matter what time period we're in, what culture we're in, none of that matters. All of, all that does is adds to it in some way. It just means we're going to do it a little bit different. So like, here's where I was going with the evolution of emotions. So here's what I was thinking about. So I hope this is going to make sense. So let me just say it. Because a lot of people don't think that emotions even serve a purpose necessarily. What are they even here for? Why do we even have to experience them? A lot of us see them as very irrational. It's that all of a sudden we're overreacting. All of a sudden we're super sensitive to everything and we're crying every day and we can't make decisions or we're getting super angry and frustrated. So why are emotions even relevant? Those are surface level emotions. And those are actually mostly reactions to how we're feeling. So they're really their behaviors. A lot of what I'm talking about and why I encourage you to watch my videos continuously is because I'm not... When I'm talking about how we feel about ourselves, it's to me that we exist because I'm good enough, me. Just sitting here right now, I am enough. And when we stop believing that, that's when we start developing the defense mechanisms, the unhealthy coping mechanisms. That's when we start getting into toxic cycles, things that are not good for us. They're not helping us grow. They're not helping us improve ourselves. They're not helping us gain this deeper sense of who we are and connecting to that. It's actually disconnecting us from all of that. And we do that when we're not feeling good about who we are, when we don't think that we matter. And if I don't think that I matter, why am I even here? So isn't existence then also that we have to believe that we are meaningful in some way? And the fact that I'm here tells me that I'm meaningful. So again, existence and meaning kind of go hand in hand. And meaning can be just another word for love. So that's what I was saying in the last video, love consciousness, that I exist and I'm capable of becoming more consciously aware of why that's important and what that means to me. And to do that, it's layers and layers and layers of going back and understanding the different emotions, the different layers of emotions. And it's then connecting to them. This is a process. It's not something that happens overnight. It just really isn't. It's just this unfolding that we continue to do throughout life. But we're capable of it. So if we're capable of it, to me personally, that means that that's our truth in some way. Which is why I say ultimate truth and my truth, aligning with my truth means believing actually believing that I'm lovable. I can sit here and say that I love myself, but then every day I can do things where I'm actually treating myself like shit and not even realizing it. Behavior implications. I talk about that all the time. Because I'm, if I'm sitting here telling you that I love myself unconditionally, but then I'm dating a crackhead that treats me horribly and calls me names and we have no deep connection, does that sound like I'm really valuing myself in that situation? Not to me, not really, no. And I can tell you personally, being in that situation, I wasn't valuing myself. I was trying to get somebody else to tell me that I was worth something. Why? What does that imply if I need somebody else to tell me that? It implies that I'm not believing it. So once again, I wasn't consciously aware of my worthiness. So I needed somebody else to make me conscious of that. But nobody else can do that. Nobody else can fill our void. That void is for us. It's for us to go in there and love that part of ourselves even more. Which means what? It means going in there and shining that light. Which means what? It means going in there and saying, hey, you exist. And this is why and this is the purpose. You have purpose. You have meaning. But to shine that light and create that awareness, 
again, it goes back to going, going back, sorry, to the inner child healing and understanding where we even came from, how we originally started connecting and what we took into adulthood, what we took that was healthy and not necessarily healthy, meaning things that are going to disconnect us more from ourselves and our truth or things that are going to push us closer to that deeper connection a deeper connection to our existence so when i was thinking about the evolution of emotions or just how we even started out as mankind in general and again i'm not going to get super specific right now but how did emotions play a role back when we really what we were trying to do is survive we're still trying to survive that's always in our nature we want and need to survive because why again we're trying to consistently perpetuate our existence us it's what we know how to do it's what every cell organism on the planet and within our body knows how to do it knows how to regenerate itself to continue on so how do emotions play a role in that why are they even relevant so i was thinking about going way back to when we first kind of started out as, I, I just want to say humans, in our most original form. However you want to believe that, you believe we come from monkeys or not, it doesn't matter. It's what I'm talking about is at some point we existed and we started out. And, and we were these ugly little hairy creatures. Yes, I'm sure. Why? Because our environment at the time, that's what we were adapted to. That's what we existed in. And so it's we're going to change according to everything that continues to change. Even a couple hundred years ago, we look totally different. So if, if you don't believe in evolution, I'm, I'm not sure. Because really, it's just another word for we're just constantly changing. And again, that can be proven. Go look at a picture of yourself from when you were younger. It's just we're always changing. It's just on different scales, different levels. And we can't fathom certain things because we personally don't even remember being around thousands of years ago. And how long has, has existence even existed? We can't even put a time frame on it because we don't know. It just is and that's what we know. But what we know is that, okay, so we're these ugly little hairy creatures, right? And we're hairy again because even mammals, we are mammals. So I think about mammals now because it's winter time where I'm at. And during the winter, animals, their fur will get thicker. Why? It's a survival mechanism. Evolution. It's something that is within them, a natural ability for them to adapt to their environment because it's colder. So their hair gets thicker so that they don't freeze to death. Same thing with us. So we're these hairy little creatures. So we don't freeze to death. So however you want to look at that, it doesn't even, it doesn't matter. We just know, just know and understand that we adapt to our environment naturally. And we continue to move and process naturally, however that's going to look. But so where were emotions in that? Why were emotions relevant? Were they? What is unconditional love? What was unconditional love back then? I, so what I was thinking about is that, and I'm talking back before we even understood fire, we were creating tools even. Why? Because all of that was helping us to continue to survive better. It was helping us become more and more efficient. Were we worried about breaking up with our boyfriend or girlfriend? No, I'm worried about how the hell I'm going to eat. But... That's what I was saying in the last video. Love isn't necessarily something that we feel for somebody else, although we can say that and we can use that term. That's fine. But the way I was looking at it, and when I'm talking about existence and love consciousness, being conscious of my meaning, me, that I have purpose, it's that I'm going to try to exist how I can and survive how I can to perpetuate my life. Because that's what I'm made to do. I really do believe that. And that I'm enough. 
And so when I say I love myself, it's that I matter. So I'm going to do what I can to continue to survive and adapt in different environments to perpetuate that love for myself, which is really to continue my existence. So when I started thinking about it more in that sense and not in the butterflies in my stomach and I love this person or I love myself, so I'm going to buy myself something. When I started really just looking at it as I matter and I have purpose just and not because I need to do something huge for the world. It's that I have purpose because I exist and I'm here and I'm me. And again, I'm enough. Back then, even when we were just trying to survive, creating our tools, and we didn't even know what fire was at one point, what did we know? We knew that we existed. We don't know how or why, and that doesn't even matter. It still doesn't even matter. It's all theories, really. It is. They're very interesting theories, and I love talking about it. I like hearing about it. But what do we know? Is that, okay, I'm here. So if I'm actually going out and trying to create these tools to make my life better, to become more efficient so that I can eat and survive better, that's self-improvement. It is. It's not in an emotional sense that we think about it now necessarily. I'm not going to therapy, you know. But what am I doing because of what's happening at the time? I'm loving myself because I'm doing what I can to continue to perpetuate my existence. That is self-love. Really, you think about it. So I'm becoming conscious of that I'm enough, that I matter. I'm demonstrating that by getting more efficient at hunting and gathering, for example. So now we've created tools and now we've created fire. We understand now how to make that for ourselves so that we can cook our meat so that we're able to what? Eat it and digest it differently so that we survive better and throughout time and again I'm not going to get into details but throughout time that's really what we continue to do is we're getting more efficient at us really our process of becoming purposeful staying purposeful being purposeful and every time we we do that we're saying, you know what, I'm, I matter and I'm good enough because I'm demonstrating self-love and this unconditional love for myself by wanting to do what I can for me in that sense of survival. So emotions still played a role in that sense. It's really, it was that we may not have thought about it the same way that we would now, but we actioned it into our everyday life. Again, by creating sophistication, if you want to call it that, becoming more intelligent. And again, I know different parts of the brain that have developed more and different parts of the brain that are responsible for different types of emotions. I get that. But that also has to do with adaptation. It has to do with changing. But when I'm worried about what the hell I'm going to eat tonight, again, that's, that is my main concern. And how that's going to happen, I'm going to have to figure that out. And so we did. And we figured it out well. But not only that, but then we figured out how to create civilizations, societies, cultures, all of those things. We just kept evolving into building because that's what we do. We continue to build. Now, there are surface level emotions, like I said, and there are deeper layers of emotions, I think, me personally, I believe. And the deeper layers of emotions are the ones that I talk about on this channel all the time at our core. Is that, again, I'm valuable and I'm meaningful. And how does that reflect now into my everyday life and how is that reflected back to me? So now we figured out how to survive. We figured out how to do that well. And we then figured out how to, again, create different things in our cultures and communities that just once again reflects our progress. Through all of that, we're creating meaning in our own way. Through all this time, Hundreds of hundreds of hundreds of hundreds of years. 
We're continuing to connect. We're continuing to unfold. So did they have marriage counselors a thousand years ago? I don't know. Was that relevant? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. It really, it depends on the time and what we were trying to accomplish. But what I really believe that we were always trying to accomplish is existence. And for me, that's love. So really, haven't we always been truly in a state of loving ourselves by trying to perpetuate our lives more efficiently? And that demonstrates love in itself, which is why now I'm going to get jump into modern day times. A lot of what I talk about, the shame and the toxic cycles, the reason why that does not demonstrate self-love is because when we stay stuck and however that's going to look like for you, just we're stuck in a situation or we're stuck in a bad marriage. We're stuck in a relationship that's making us miserable. We're stuck in a situation that's making us miserable. There's no growth in that. Now we're going to continue on because we're still, we're human. We progress. So we're, it's a continuous movement of life. Life is a continuous movement. Even if you're not moving, it's still going. It's a constant flow of energy. But if I'm stuck somewhere, if I'm stuck in a certain, if I am stuck in a certain state of being, where am I building? Where am I improving? Where am I growing within myself? Therefore, how am I connecting deeper and deeper, which again, I'm capable of, you are capable of, because it's what we do. It's what we've continued to prove once again. If it's one thing we're capable of. It's depth. And we may not see it like that. You may look at it in a different way that we're capable of technology. Okay, what does that mean? It means an advancement in intelligence. Okay, what does that mean? It means that we're continuing to assess and understand what we need to improve our environment to what? improve our existence our state of existence perpetuating life it's what we do it's what we keep doing so if i'm stuck somewhere because i'm not conscious of the fact that i'm lovable meaning i don't even believe it within myself to some degree because again maybe different things that have happened to me because now we're more aware of things like that so if i don't believe that i'm not connecting to that I'm going to stay stuck. And it doesn't even mean physically where I'm literally doing the same thing every day. I'm talking about stuck within myself, meaning just for an example, if I can go 10 layers deep, if I'm capable of that, I'm only going to go one layer deep and I'm going to stay in that one layer for the rest of my life, even though I'm capable of 10. The reason why I consider that being stuck is because if I'm capable of 10, why am I not expanding to that 10th level? Why? Something's stopping me from doing that. And it's not intelligence. I'm talking about emotions right now. Now I'm getting in more again into the emotional layer. Because if I feel stuck, it's not necessarily something in my brain, what I'm thinking, even though we can stay stuck in our thoughts, of course. But a lot of that is dependent, again, on how we are feeling about ourselves, really. Because if I'm not feeling good about myself and I just don't really care about anything and I don't care to connect, I'm not going to do anything any more than what I need to, the basics. I'm not going to try to, again, improve. I'm not going to try to do anything more meaningful for myself. Does that sound like self-love? Does that sound like we're reaching our potential? If we've been given this potential, why don't we want to reach it? I think we don't want to reach it when... Once again, we're not feeling good about ourselves. So back now, going way back 2,000 years ago, or I'm just giving you a number, where were these hairy little creatures? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sitting here crying on the couch necessarily, but I'm doing what I can to perpetuate my existence. So once again, I'm that kind of by nature implies that I'm feeling good about myself because I'm wanting to continue on. I'm wanting to progress how I can. So I'm doing what I can to survive. It's really progression, survival, connection, emotions, all consciousness, 
all of that kind of goes hand in hand. They really do. It's all connected. So when I talk about connectedness, all of that is connected and all of its relevance. So when we connect to one thing, we're actually connecting to everything. So the whole I am movement, I understand that. I'm connected to myself because I'm connected to everything. I'm connected to everything. Therefore, I'm connected to me because of existence. That to me is why. And existence also to me is consciousness. Once the more conscious I become with different things, the more I'm going to try to adapt to it. The more I'm going to move towards it and move into it and unfold within it. So I hope that kind of makes sense. So now going skipping now back to modern times, if I'm not feeling good about myself, I'm going to choose to stay stuck. I'm going to stay at level one. And it's not because I'm stupid. That's not what I'm implying. And I'm not saying that it's because I don't know any better No. Although it's, not that we don't know any better, it's that we don't want better. Because we, are, as far as I'm concerned, we are capable of going to the 10th level. Everybody is. But not everybody's going to choose to connect to that ability to do that. So another word for universe to me would also be ability. We have the ability to connect. We have the ability to expand consciousness. We have the ability for such fulfillment. But that doesn't mean that we're going to do it within ourselves. Why? Because we don't want to and we have that choice. That to me is the free will that people talk about. It's are you going to connect to your abilities deeper and deeper? Or are you going to choose to not connect deeper and deeper? It's always your choice. But the capability of it exists, existence exists. Life is perpetuated. So however you're going to make that happen for yourself, the emotions once again play a role because through all of this, part of our depth is the, is that emotional layer because as life continues to transform and as our environment has continued to change over time, what has also changed our ability for emotions our need for emotions so yeah the whole feeling good about myself and believing that i matter and demonstrating that by perpetuating my existence has always been there but now let's add in the other layers of things that people think just are irrelevant and they're not even fear fear is for the survival or i'm sorry for the purpose of survival even but fear can also prevent us from loving ourselves and reaching potential and creating fulfillment also. It depends on how we utilize it. So we got to think about all these things. And it's interesting because all of it, once again, it's all true. So if I can go 10 layers deep and I'm only going one layer deep, that's that's what I was meant to do in that lifetime. I believe that also. We can't all go 10 layers deep, all of us, all at once. Because if we did, there would be no variation. We'd all be the same and then it would create a sameness. I've talked about that a little bit. But then that's basically we're robots and we're not robots. We're not. That's not even how we were created. We have so many different layers and levels and we're all experiencing them all at different times. And energy is just a continuous flow. We're not robots. So I understand why some people are going to be at layer one. Some people might be at layer two, layer three, layer four. Again, these are linear terms. Just to put it into a perspective, I don't really think there's 10 layers. I think it's just a process that, that can just continue to go. The depth is however far you want to take it and it's as far as you want to however far you take it within yourself that's again going to reflect in your everyday life it's going to reflect in your relationships it's going to reflect in how you are and how you connect so it really does start within us it really does but we have to do it and so this is kind of what it's looking like but it's we have to be committed to it and not only committed to it, we have to be intentional about it. And a big part of that to me is also believing that we can 
So again, if I'm only if I'm a layer one, because I don't even think there is a layer two, or I don't know how to go there, or I don't, I just don't know what to do about it. Or maybe I'm stuck. I don't feel good about myself. And so I don't really want to take anything any further. I don't want to create any type of meaning or fulfillment in my life. I just want to stay at level one. Totally your choice. But again, where do emotions play a role in that? For me personally, it's because the more we start stuffing our emotions, the more we deny them, the more we just be, are not conscious of how we're feeling about ourselves. That's what keeps us stuck because I'm not going to want better for myself. If I am going to stay in this situation, it works for me. I feel safe. I do the same exact thing every day. I'm with the same person. We have our exact role dynamic that I can handle. That's what I'm going to handle. That's, that's all I'm going to connect with. The reason why, again, the emotional connectedness is so important to me, self-awareness, emotional awareness, self-love, all of these things I talk about all the time. For me personally, the more I started experiencing my emotions and allowing myself to really experience them and connect with them in a meaningful way, by what? Again, allowing them to exist within me. By not denying them, by not putting them so far out of reach and out of my conscious awareness that I couldn't even see it. Once I started bringing that into my consciousness, all of a sudden I started connecting to this depth within myself and not a logical depth because I've always been deep as far as I'm concerned. I've always been very philosophical. I've been able to get into these kinds of discussions since I was like in elementary school. Now, have they also themselves developed? Yeah, because I've gained more experiences and I've, you know, just again, gone through different things and I'm older now and my brain has developed more. All of that is relevant. And so I'm just able to expand on my ideas more and more. But the logic's always been there for me. But what's different now is the emotional layer because I didn't know how to feel my feelings before. I really didn't. And it's, it's funny that I say that because it almost doesn't even seem true at this point. But really, I didn't know how to feel my feelings until I got into therapy and I started doing my inner child work. Why? Because I started realizing where and how I was wounded and how I was actually taking that into my everyday life. And how that's how I started connecting to other people. So really, I stayed at level one because that's where I was connected to myself. So therefore, that's how I was connecting to everybody else. I wanted more than that. I was like, this, I'm capable of more. So that wasn't satisfying for me. But I just, again, I didn't know where to go with it. So I started to heal. And I started to get in touch with me and that I am lovable. Meaning I started to believe that. Meaning I started to go back and heal wounds that prevented me from believing that. Okay, here I am being sexually abused. Does that tell me that I'm lovable? No. That implies that I mean nothing. So why do I even exist? So then that actually made me start believing that I don't exist and that I have no reason to. So why should I even care about anything? Stay at level one. Because if I go any deeper, it's going to be scary because that's how it feels, doesn't it? Yeah, because we don't know it's at level two, yet alone level three. Again, I'm just using these as numbers to show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to say at level one because it feels safe. But something doesn't feel right about it. And I could honestly say that too. But I stayed in my head. I stayed very logical about it. Okay, let me start healing these wounds. Okay, let me start looking at some of these things that have happened to me. Let me let me start trying to feel the feelings that maybe I couldn't really feel back then. How do you even do that? Even that, again, is a process. So I started doing that more and more. And just all of a sudden, it was I started to see myself. And... Once I started to see myself, what does that also mean? It also means I started to connect to myself. What does that mean? It means that I 
I exist. And I see that now and I see the potential of it. I see how that could be very meaningful and how I wasn't creating that meaning for myself. So I started creating that meaning for myself by feeling my damn feelings. So I'm going to always encourage you guys to do that. And I didn't just sit and cry and that was it. It was, I had to go and shine a light in the areas that were dark. And that's just a metaphor for I had to go back and connect to memories and experiences where I was told and shown that I wasn't, lovable so I couldn't connect to a lovable person in those moments so that created a void it created a void within my soul self because I think the soul is energy and energy is emotion it's emotions in motion so if my emotions if they're not able to just flow freely and I can't connect with them and there's no depth then who am I and once again how am I meaningful so we need to create that flow, that continuous flow. We need to allow it by not controlling our emotions, by seeing them as beautiful, as purposeful, because I'm purposeful and I'm beautiful and I mean something. And I can live a more fulfilling, satisfying life when I connect with that flow, that process, me. We are the process. <laughs> Not things that we do to help us. That's, that's how it's, that's helping our process. But we ultimately are the process. It's just, again, this unfolding of truth. And the truth is that we're all lovable. The truth is that we exist. And there's a reason for it. And it's not because I'm going to go out and heal the world. No. Is can that happen and can I help and can I do things to help other people? Yeah, can you? Of course. But that's not the goal. The goal is that we are okay, just who we are, just being who we are. And when we start to really understand that, to me that's unconditional love. That's the true love that we can start to feel for ourselves. That gives us that meaning that really again, gives us that sense of purpose because if I'm lovable, no matter what, I'm okay. And so that allows me to really just experience things now in the moment, to be in my present self in the moment and really enjoy it and connect to it because I understand that I deserve it because I exist. And I understand that I exist because of all of these things that I'm talking about. And the more that we want to exist, really, the more we will. So that means I can go sit on a park bench and just sit and enjoy my environment and just enjoy me and just enjoy everything that I'm absorbing in that moment. It's very hard to do that when I'm constantly busy or I'm constantly stuffing my emotions. So I'm constantly looking away. I'm constantly creating distractions in my life so that I don't have to connect with certain things. How can I sit and be in my present day self, my moment with me when I'm constantly trying to distract myself? And we don't think we're doing it, but we are in so many different ways. And we'll try to take a day off and we'll try to do something fun. But then the next day, it's like we're right back to the rat races. I mean, we're just right back to going right back to our same cycles over and over and over again. We have to work, I get that. Not all of us, but most of us, you know, we have to work, we have to get the kids to school, we have to cook dinner. There, you know, there are things that we have to do in our everyday life, I totally get that. But in moments, we have opportunities to connect and we can and that for me is where I'm at right now where I'm starting to appreciate that more and more because whatever is happening that doesn't stop me from being able to be in my present day moment even for five minutes connecting with something beautiful 
Going to work doesn't stop me from doing that. You think I don't have five minutes in my day? Do you think I'm working for 24 hours straight? No. We have five minutes. We can take five minutes. Sometimes it only takes five minutes. And those are the moments that I've come to appreciate and I'm trying to implement those more and more. But the reason why I see them and that I can be more grateful for them is because I'm more grateful for myself, for my existence, because I've connected to the emotional self, the emotional layer, love, consciousness, me, that I am unconditional love. But we put conditions on it. We do. Well, if you don't work, then you're really not lovable. If you don't look a certain way, you're not lovable. If you don't do certain things, you're not lovable. If you don't have a certain amount of money, you're not lovable. We do that. We place those conditions on ourselves. Society places those conditions on us. Programming. That's why it just... What, I've never really been into that in the first place. I always looked at society and just you got it's funny to me because everybody's running around trying to create all this depth and meaning and things that have no meaning because once again if everything was taken away from you what is left you nature animals plants rocks minerals those are things that are always going to exist because that's part of how we exist. Cell phones, that can be taken away from you in an instant. Not being able to go on TikTok, oh no, what am I gonna do now? Everything can be taken away from us. That doesn't mean that we can't still be connected to ourselves because that's what's always true. So if I continue to exist, that continues to be ultimate truth. Because yeah, I want other people to exist because I care about other people, of course. But we go back to, again, the basics, me, that we are here and I'm adaptive by nature and I need to survive and I'm going to do what I can to perpetuate my own life, my own existence. That means that I need to see myself as very valuable and I need to demonstrate that value. And we, again, we don't do that by making more money. How do we do that? Because again, all that's taken away from you, boom, how are you still valuable? How do you still create that value within yourself? That love, love consciousness, whatever you want to call it. How do you do it? By doing what you're capable of doing, which is what? Continuing to connect deeper and deeper to you. And how that's going to look is going to be part of your process. Because it's you, it's you walking the walk, it's you unfolding, it's you connecting to the different layers that you do have. We do have different layers. Now going back now to the hairy little creatures running around. <laughs> we still had depth back then. It was just a different kind of a depth. And again, we don't know fully. We know what we're conscious of in this moment, really. It's at each stage each level each point in time we're capable of different things and so therefore we're connecting to things a little bit differently but what's always true is what that we've always existed so that means that we always have mattered that we have meaning so again when that's what we're constantly connected with that depth will continue to unfold and I believe in multiple lifetimes also. So I think we just, it keeps going. Again, the energy just keeps going. And it keeps gathering different experiences. And it continues to flow. So we continue to become more and more capable of depth. As if we want to call it time, we can call it time as time goes on. But it's as this flow continues to, to create and to unfold. What it's doing is it's holding on to more and more experiences and more and more meaning. And that already continues to allow us more depth in each lifetime, in each way of being. So when I was this hairy little creature, for just for an example, I'm just trying to eat. I'm trying to stay warm. And I'm trying not to die. I'm trying not to get killed by whatever vicious animal might be lurking around the corner to come get me. 
That's what I'm concerned about. But that's love because I matter enough to be aware of that, to adapt to it. And then the next phase where I'm not having to be so worried about that or so concerned about that. Now I'm just becoming more adaptive to what the environment is offering now at this point. That's all we're doing. We're continuing to adapt. We're continuing to flow. But emotions have always been there. I don't know that they've been as in depth, I'll just say, as they are now. And I only say that because, again, we need certain emotions are telling us something for survival reasons. It's relevant to perpetuate life. And all through all of that, it's us loving ourselves, really. It's us wanting, I would say, better for ourselves, but not the way we see it now. Because better for me is, once again, I'm going to try not to die tonight by some vicious animal because I have to sleep on a rock because that's my bed. So, again, what am I concerned about? I'm concerned about not getting eaten. But that's, again, that's love. So we have the ability to, I don't want to say we're not loving ourselves more now. It's that we, we can expand on what that looks like even. And the environment now is different. But we at our core are still humans. So then I started thinking about about that, like how it is that now, now going back, jumping into modern times, it's, we have created this technology, yes, to allow us this efficiency for life. But what does that mean? It means that I don't have to spend the whole day hunting for an animal so that I can feed my family. That's, that was a concern at one point though, right? So if now what I'm having to do is I can just go to the grocery store. I can go to Taco Bell right down the street and go get me something to eat real quick if I want. So eating is more efficient for me now. So survival is more efficient. So what does that mean? I started thinking about that. It's now we're actually creating more space for emotional connectedness. Because now I'm not so concerned with the hunting and gathering. Because again, I'm just going to go grab me a burrito. There's my energy. I mean, literally, I'm eating so that I can have this energy so I can continue on. I'm not wasting it, spending eight hours trying to kill something and then learn how to cook it so I can eat it. I just ate a burrito in two seconds. So what does that do? That efficiency creates space. And I'm not going to get super into this right now. I've talked a little bit about it. But when space is created in energy, energy will come in and balance it out in the universe. The universe itself will continue to balance out space. So if mankind in general, kind of where how we're evolving right now, and I've even read about this and heard about that we're we're reaching the age of emotion, of connecting to that more and more right now. We're even in the age of Aquarius is coming up. And I'm not talking about February, the month of February. That's not what I'm talking about. The age of it, the constellation. I'll, I want to get into that a different time. But research it. It's fascinating. Is that in different time periods? in different constellations and what we're going through in that particular age, era, whatever you want to call it, certain things are taking place. And right now we're in the era of emotions. And I can see why. I understand why that's happening. Not that emotions haven't always existed to some degree, but again, when they're more for survival purposes, they're rele more relevant in that sense. We have to understand how they're relevant. But all that means is that in a different age or a different era, 
in a different culture, in a different time. They're still important. But what is different? Again, that we're connecting to them differently. We're experiencing them a little bit differently, aren't we? So now we are going to marriage counseling, aren't we? We do have therapists. We have books on all these different things. We have technology now where we can see what's happening in different parts of the world even. Even that is changing the way that we can feel and how we're connecting to other people. Because now we are able to know more things. And that changes us. All of these things changes us, our perspective. It changes how we adapt. But what never changes is that things continue to change. That never stops. So we're in the emotional era right now. And it's funny because, again, when I started this channel, I all I knew is that I try to talk to people about how I feel and people shut me down. Why? Because they're not comfortable with how they feel. And when we shut each other down and we don't want to talk about our feelings, meaning we don't want to feel our feelings, we're missing out on that connection. We're missing out on that depth that we're capable of. Well, how do I know I'm capable of it? Once again, because I can do it. And now personally, I know because I'm experiencing it and I'm continuing to go as deep as I can go whatever that's going to look like for me. It's just going to continue to expand, but it's me. It's how I continue to feel about myself. Am I even worthy enough to keep wanting this for me? Are you worth it? Do you think you're worth it? Do you feel purposeful? Do you want to feel? Uh, it's always going to be your choice. But I got to tell you again, the more I feel, the more, the more real, I become even to myself that's why I don't really like talking to a lot of people sometimes because we get people and their mask the masked version of people they're not being authentic they're not being honest we think we are and we're not it's what I'm presenting to you is what I've been programmed to be what I'm presenting to you is what I think you might like what I'm presenting to you is what I've always known even because I've never tried different. So a big part of this process too is we're getting rid of the shitty foundation, the coming into this human human experience where already we're we have all these expectations put on us. We're programmed to think and feel a certain way and do certain things. Otherwise, we're not meaningful. If you're not a doctor or a lawyer or you're not making a lot of money, if you're not driving a certain car, if you don't look a certain way, you're not meaningful. The world doesn't flat out tell us that but it sure the hell implies it by what we value what we start to value what we start to find meaning in what we try to connect with all of that means nothing because again none of that's true why because it can all be taken away in a heartbeat what you can't ever take away from somebody is their depth their truth you can't take away my emotional self you can't you can take away my physical self you can kill me but my energy is going to continue on. You can never take that away from me. Nobody can take that away from you. So if the energy is what continues on and energy is emotion, then why do we not care as much to facilitate that, to utilize that, to really connect deeply with that? Why don't we care about that? Why do we keep wanting to connect with things on the surface, things that don't really matter, things that can be taken away? Why is that so important? That's the time period that we're in. But that makes us kind of stifle our emotions even more, doesn't it? Because again, I'm connecting to things outside of myself. When we try to do that, we're never then connecting back to us nobody can fill our void i talk about that all the time if i don't feel like i matter if i don't understand how i'm purposeful you can't make me feel that i have to believe that within myself i have to demonstrate that by connecting to it don't i and if it is existence and i'm existence then when i'm connecting to it it's really me and then i'm trying to perpetuate my life and fulfill that purpose with me and how do we do that by feeling because that's part of us. 
emotions, the emotional layer, feelings in general. It's part of who we are. It's part of what makes us us. So earlier I was talking about that we have more space now for this emotional era, if that's what we want to call it. And the reason why I say we have more space is because once again, we're becoming more efficient as people, as a society. So since we're becoming more efficient, I can go get my burrito and eat in two seconds. What the hell am I going to do now for the next 15 hours of my day? You get bored. I get bored. I get bored really easily. And if I'm not feeling connected. So... We're trying to create all this space by overworking ourselves and like going, 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 running, 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 doing, doing, doing. But really the space is being created for us to start to feel. Because yeah, now I'm going to get bored because I don't have things to do. I'm not out riding a roller coaster. I'm not climbing a mountain. I'm not having to work 15, 16 hours. The hell do we do with all that time? We have this time now, really. We have this space so if the universe sees this space it's going to fill it in to balance it out so what is it balancing it in with sorry what can we fill that space with consciousness depth really that's what we can do because we don't need to do certain things to survive anymore once again so now we have time and I don't even want to say that we didn't have time before, whatever you want to call it, space. We have an opportunity to really expand on our emotional self. We have an opportunity now to create more meaning in our emotional layer. We have the opportunity to really go layer as deep as you want to go, layers deep into ourselves and continue on and I think that's kind of what I was thinking as far as the evolution of it and why emotions they've always been relevant I don't think that I think surface level emotions have always been the same you know we have the fear we have the anger we have the frustration the anger tells me that something hurt me the anger is also going to prompt me to take action sometimes not in a unhealthy way they serve their purpose. Surface level emotions have always served their purpose for survival. The purpose of survival. Again, why? To perpetuate existence because that's what we know to do. That's what we are capable of doing. And that's what's been proven that we continue to do. Because if nothing exists, then it doesn't matter. We don't matter because we don't exist. So I matter, meaning I exist. So I exist, therefore I matter. If I don't believe that in these modern day times, because this is how we're living right now, the space that we're creating, the space that we can now fill in with a more depth of emotional self, emotional connectedness, love consciousness, love expansion. Now that we have space to do that more and more, what are we doing instead? We're getting into... Once again, we're getting into toxic cycles. We're getting into situations where we're stuck and we're not we're not fulfilling our purpose. We're not connecting to our purpose. We're not aligning with our truth sometimes, are we? But we can be. At least for me, that's what I believe and that's what I'm doing right now. Why? Because I can. Because I'm alive and I exist right now. And what I understand is that right now in the environment that I'm in right now. When I'm not valuing myself, I'm doing things that are not good for me. Meaning I'm doing things that are actually, you know, I continue to exist. But I don't continue to feel meaningful. And I don't even continue to believe that I'm meaningful if I'm doing certain things, if I'm believing that I'm not lovable. So yeah, physically I'm here, but I have no depth. So add that layer now of capability onto it. Now 
why are we not trying to reach this potential? And why are we not trying to connect with our abilities that we've been given right now to do all of these things? I know this is this was a heavy video, but I just want you to think about that because in all my other videos, I talk about the, you know, again, I give examples of toxic cycles that I've been in or that other people have been in or shared with me, just different things that we do. And again, every time we're in these situations where we're not feeling lovable, I continue to exist, but I don't care. And I don't, I'm not conscious of how lovable I really am. So I'm not reaching that depth. And I believe that if we have this potential and we're not reaching it, then we're not really happy. We could say we're happy. We can do things that make us happy. But for me, I guess I'll say we don't have that inner joy. So I can't be in my present moment. I can't really connect to myself in the moment and see it and feel it as beautiful and experience it as deeply enriching. Why? Because I don't think that I deserve it. Why? Because I'm disconnecting from myself by not loving who I am, by not believing that. So how can you be in your present day moment and enjoy and feel the gratitude and demonstrate that and feel inner peace and inner joy? If what we're doing is stuffing our emotions, stopping ourselves from feeling them, stopping ourselves from connecting with them, stopping ourselves from even feeling them for other people or even allowing people to feel them for us. We stop all of that when we stop it within ourselves. And I want to make another video about really unconditional love and what I think that is. And yeah, it's that we love other people. And they love us that's how we could see it but really it's i like you or i want to i'm connecting with you in a certain way and vice versa but none of that means anything if i don't believe i deserve it again if i don't believe i'm worthy of it i'm not going to want to have anything to do with it so again i'm going to stay in the situation that's how I'm feeling about myself at the time, the role that I chose to play in whatever relationship dynamic that I choose to be in, whatever that's, whatever's happening in that dynamic is going to be a direct reflection of how I'm feeling about myself. So if in that dynamic, I'm staying at level one, even though I'm capable of 10 levels, so I'm staying at level one, but not only that, it's I'm allowing myself to be mistreated or if I'm allowing myself to just stay stuck so I'm not reaching potential. And if I have ability for potential and I'm not reaching that, is that self-love? Is that me really valuing myself? If I'm not giving myself purpose by reaching this potential, is that me feeling meaningful or aligning with my truth? Or am I, I aligning with toxicity? Am I aligning with something that doesn't feel good? Am I aligning with something that's holding me back? Am I aligning with something that's, again, it's not ceasing my existence, but it's not allowing me to connect with how I can exist. So I hope that makes sense. I just want you guys to think about all those things. It's not right or wrong. I'm just kind of this, honestly, I was thinking about this this morning. So emotions, no matter what part of the brain has been developed over time or what situations we've had to overcome, what different cultures we're in, what parts of the world, all of that, all of that's relevant to adaptation. But adaptation is also relevant to emotions, the emotional self. I think the emotional self has always existed because I think it's always been love consciousness and that I matter. I matter because I exist. I exist because I matter. It's just all the different layers of emotions and how we can experience them and how they're reflected outwards, how we're projecting them onto other people. And 
how we see it within ourselves, that's what kind of changes really. So it's now that we have this space to reflect on things like that. Now we can really look at relationship dynamics, for example. Now I really can look at what I'm doing in my life and do I feel stuck? Am I Am I believing that I'm lovable because I'm creating meaning? Am I giving my emotions purpose? Am I by connecting with them? Or am I ignoring them? Am I pretending like they're not there, even though they are? So survival, adaptation, transformation, existence, perpetuation of life, all of that connection to me mean something very similar what is that all of those things i just mentioned what is it it's a process it's us it's what we're capable of and however that's going to continue to look we don't know but right now in my present day moment what am i capable of believing that i'm worth this damn life believing that i'm worth connecting to myself believing that i matter and that I'm here and the fact that I'm here I'm meaningful so then what can I do in my everyday life to continue to create that meaning within myself and really express that and for me again it's I'm taking these moments where I wouldn't really necessarily take before because I was constantly busy or rushing or really disconnecting and not realizing it or trying to create these scenarios where I just, I needed to somehow feel okay with myself because I didn't. So I was never really, to me, living or experiencing. Physically, I was living. But emotionally, I just, I was dead inside. I just, I was disconnected. I was not consciously aware. The awareness comes in when we continue to really go back to the beginning even because even when we do the inner child work what what do we know from that even that we always start out from square one however you want to look at it we come into a state of being as an infant an infantile state of being where what we're just not we don't know as much we don't understand as much we continue to grow and what develop and what connects, gather experiences, which what allows us what depth. Just like going back to the hairy little tiny creatures running around. It's like you can look at that and see that as an infantile state of being. We didn't know as much. And we just knew that we were here and we needed to eat and sleep and to survive. And the universe provided us ways to do that. We always had stuff to eat. We had animals to kill. We had plants to eat. That's always existed for us in that sense. So again, that just still proves that whatever time period you want to look at, is that at some point we just, we start out not knowing as much. We start out needing to survive why or how learning how to do that by what adapting to our environment by what understanding our environment understanding what it is that we even need to do so really all of that is also capability we are capable of all of these things if we're capable of it it's relevant we're capable of emotional connectedness we're capable of feeling our feelings whether you think that we should or shouldn't or you see it or you don't, we're capable of it. It, it because it exists. Do you want to connect to it? I'm telling you from my personal experience, how I've continued to grow and just change and evolve throughout this particular lifetime. Just right now where I'm at, the connection I feel with myself is amazing. It's, it's not even about other people at this point. It's me. And I'm not saying I don't want to connect to other people. And I'm not saying that we can't. 
and that we can't be married or have families and stuff. That's not what I'm saying. But really, it starts within us. And again, I know we hear that all the time. It starts with you. But it's a process still. It's not as simple as a two-minute video. It's not as simple as to just go outside and enjoy life. No. What does that look like? So that's what I keep talking about on this channel. That's what I'm going to continue to talk about. And all of these ideas that I'm throwing out there and just different perspectives, they're just mine. It's the way I'm thinking about things. It's, it's really, I'll just have the most random thoughts. <laughs> but I've always thought about these things because I've always been so fascinated with it. So you can agree, disagree, but just think about that. What are you capable of? You personally, whoever's still watching this video, what are you capable of? And are you, are you connecting to that ability for it? Are you doing it? Are you going for it? And really that to me just means expanding consciousness in all the ways that I describe in all the videos. I can't just keep I need you guys to watch the videos more so that you just kind of understand what I'm talking about because I can't keep saying the same thing in each video per se and I can't just define it in a sentence or even a paragraph. Even me explaining it is a process and if it took me all this time to really just kind of explain it up until this point, then that's fine. Even that, again, it's been my the unfolding of me and just how I'm even connecting with you and how you're connecting with me and the ideas and these thoughts. So think about all those things. What are you capable of? And what's holding you back? Because when I talk about toxic cycles, unhealthy behavior patterns, those are things that hold us back. We don't have to do those things. We don't even have to connect to ourselves, but I can tell you that we cannot connect to ourselves and be doing things where we're disconnecting from ourselves at the same exact time. It doesn't work that way. Both have to exist in order for the other to exist. Duality, contrast, yes. But I can't be connected and disconnected at the same time. Tell me how that happens here. I'm going to do this. Am I, is, are my fingers connected? No. Now they are. Are they disconnected? No. It can't happen at the same time. So I think really where I'm at and the emotional era, whatever you want to call it, how it's relevant for us right now, meaning just that it's created more depth within our truth really is what I'm trying to say. Things have always been there in different layers, I believe, of existence. But now it's just in different layers, different depths. It's that we... We have to stop doing things that are disconnecting us from that in order to reach those depths. So whatever you're doing, let's keep talking about it. Let's keep thinking about it. Just be continue to become aware of where you're disconnected from you, ultimately. Emotions isn't, again, that I'm just crying on the couch right now. That's not what I mean. It's that I'm lovable and I'm worthy and that I, I'm capable and I matter and I'm here for a reason and I'm good enough and you are too. Now to believe that really to me is a process. To keep unfolding into that belief is a process. You cannot tell me that you believe you're lovable but also you're stuck and you're in a relationship that makes you miserable. How do those two things happen at the same time? answer that question it doesn't happen overnight and it's not a judgment it's not it's that we have to realize these things in order to even reach our potential to even understand that there is this capability we have to understand that we've been hindering that within ourselves and again what does all of that look like it's not a two-minute video it's not a two-minute process it's not going to happen in a week it just continues to flow. So wherever you're at, you're okay. Just continue to unfold into it. Just allow it. The best thing I can tell you, allow it. Allow it for yourself. Because that's the process. And it's you. And that's love. That's love consciousness. That I am enough. 
we'll talk more about all these things next time. I hope that made sense.